Hi folks, my name's Joe Patterson. I want to thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel. Welcome, my friends. Some stuff in here I gotta adjust a little bit. <clears throat> I've got a cold, so bear with me. <laughs> and I thank the Lord for every season of my life, even this goofy cold, because it tempts my flesh <clears throat> to act up and cause my attitude to become something that it would not normally be because I could blame it on being sick. So instead of that, I'm going to let the Lord Jesus enhance my heart into a good attitude. An attitude of goodness and love and peace and joy and kindness. And not have anything that can take that away, including sickness. So, bear with me. My cold, my voice, some coughing and hacking sometimes. Believing without doubting. This is the name of this glorious message that's on my heart. And it's a message from the Holy Spirit to Joe Patterson. And I'm going to share it with you freely, just as I received it. <coughs> In hopes to encourage you and to prompt you in wholesome thinking, that your heart can be overjoyed in Christ, trusting God without doubting. Now, real quick, we'll visit about a story in the scriptures that was told by the Holy Spirit, and men wrote it down. And what was told was about a trip the disciples made to cross across a body of water. I don't know if it was an ocean. I, I doubt it was the ocean, but some large body of water <laughs> to get to the other side. Jesus, of course, was with them. They knew when they got in the boat, they were going to the other side. That's why they got in the boat, to go to the other side. Keep that in mind. Jesus told them, we're going to the other side. They got in the boat. On the way to the other side, Jesus is taking a nap in the bow of the boat. A great wind squall, I think the scripture may say, a great squall, which is a huge wind, and the waves began to mount high, and the boat began to toss, to the point the disciples began to fear for their lives, their very lives. The wind, the waves, the storm, the, the, the water was up and, and coming in the boat, showing them that for sure we are going to perish. We're going to die. We're not going to make it to the other side. All right. So they go and they wake Jesus up. They ask him, how can you sleep? We're about to die. Jesus got up and rebuked the wind and the waves. The water calmed. The wind stopped blowing. He turns and looks at his disciples and says something very puzzling. He said, you of little faith. Little faith. Little faith. You of little faith. You doubted. You doubted. What did they doubt? They doubted that they were going to make it to the other side. Now, when God tells you that you're going to make it to the other side... You've got to believe that without doubting. So what happened to try to cause them to doubt, right? A great test came, didn't it? And it was so convincing. You or I, neither one, really can't understand the impact of it, I don't think, uh, because I've never lived it. I've never been in a boat that they were in that size. I've never been on a body of water that they were on. I've never had a squall come. I've never had uh, someone asleep in the... Uh, bow of the boat that can, that can, you know, bring me some comfort, so to speak. All things, you know, they knew him as the son of God. At least they thought they did. <clears throat> so I've never had the same situation exactly. But what I can say is by the Holy Spirit, I can interpret an impact. So I'm not making fun of the disciples at all. I am simply acknowledging the same thing. I agree with Jesus, of course, even in a situation like that. I will not judge my Lord when my Lord knows everything. And so Jesus told them, you have little faith. So they then said in their hearts, what kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. What kind of man is this? Now, they had seen miracles before this. They had seen people fed with a few loaves and a few fish. Thousands of people ate. 
They've seen people healed of their leprosy, <clears throat> seen people raised from the dead, all kinds of things, but they had never seen something like that. So every time they saw something, their flesh tempted them to doubt who he was and who he what who he could control. <coughs> they saw him overcome evil spirits. They saw him rebuke sickness and disease and death. They could not understand this man who can talk to the waves and the wind, the weather, Mother Nature, if you can hear it. And all of a sudden, he's got control over Mother Nature, right? The one that no one can control. Anyway, my whole point is this. To believe without doubting, I pray that God will give me the faith to believe without doubting. So if God tells me we're going to make it to the other side, that no matter what happens in this life, nothing can sway me from what he said. He said, we're going to make it to the other side. We're going to the other side. God spoke that knowing that he has power over the wind and the waves and the seas and the oceans and the waters. Everything obeys him. Everything submits to him. Everything. All the elements submit to him. He was there in the beginning. Everything was made by him, through him, and for him. Without him, nothing was made. So you have to believe, if you will, that we are feeble in many ways as people. We struggle believing what I just got done telling you. We struggle when the things really happen, when cancer strikes and hits your home. We struggle believing where it come from. We don't know where it come from. I do, but I'm using an example. We don't know where it come from. Where'd that come from? Oh, this wicked, terrible disease, shake your fist and rebuke the devil and all that stuff. And you don't realize who cancer serves without doubting. You gotta believe it without doubting. It's easier to talk this until it happens to you. Now I know me talking this, that these things can happen to me. And if they do, I say to you, Lord Jesus, in your great mercy and your kindness, give me, God, the faith required for me to trust you in any and every situation. So this is why the Apostle Paul could say, he's learned the secret of being content in any and every situation because he knew his Lord and the Lord knew him and he knew that God was with him and in him. So he learned that was the secret, that I can be content in any and every situation. God has not forsaken me. I am still in him and he in me. Now, I pray you can hear this. I pray that your life represents a life of godliness and holiness and sanctification unto Christ, that he is the king of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, that you are not living as a fornicator, you're not living as a thief or an adulterer. That you're not living as a wicked sinner. What God calls sins that lead to death. Godless chatter. Gossip. Backbiting. Hating your neighbor. Hate is murder. Murdering in your heart. See, God says when you hate your brother, you murder. So if you're not living that way and you're living godly and you're suffering for the cause of Christ. <clears throat> you've lost family. You've lost friends. You've lost relationships. You've lost dreams that you that you put away now because you realize they weren't godly. They were your way. They were your selfish ambition. You've stopped doing these things. You've quit and you live unto God. And when you sin, you quickly repent. Confess your sin to the Father and forsake it. And He is faithful to forgive you. All right? So if you're living that way in relationship with God and you are commuting with God, commuting commuting, you're living seven days a week, 24 hours a day, worshiping God in spirit and in truth, <laughs> then you can rest assured that God will never forsake you. You have to believe that without doubting, and you're going to go through times just as I do in your life, and the Lord may be silent through those times, and it's, it's frightening. It, it tempts you. Satan comes and tempts you to make you believe that God has forsaken you, that you are no longer in his favor or in his service. That he has forsaken you and cast you out and you are no longer a, a child of God. And at that time, you've got to be still and know that God is God and trust God to not to, to, but to his word. That he will never leave or forsake you. Unless you deny him before men, he will not deny you. 
But he does say this, and you must believe it without doubting. If you deny Christ before men, then he will deny you before his Father in heaven. These are the facts. This is the pureness of truth. I hope you can hear this message. Till next time, my name is Joe Patterson. Feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to get a hold of me and touch with me. I love to fellowship with brethren and sisters of like faith.